to, re- to contain. But remember something about the tithe. The tithe is the Lord's tithe. It's holy unto him. And so when you tithe, you, you shouldn't make a, a distinction or even split it up. You should, you should tithe. You're giving it unto the Lord, and the Lord gives it to the church. That's for the general workings of the church. Amen? The seed, the seed time and harvest, the offerings go into the other areas. And so um, just as a little note there for you when you give, because the tithes are holy. And, and I don't want to mess with them in any way. And you know what? Your giving is between you and God. Right? That's why we're not putting an offering plate in front of you. For over 45 years, God supplied all of our needs. Amen. And he'll continue to do it. And so, but it's, 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 a, it's our worship to him. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing to say, you know what, God, I'm going to take you at your word and trust you. God, because I trust you, I'm going to be like the tree planted by the waters. Amen. I'm not going to be the shrub in the desert. Going by the world's economy is, is, is whatever going, going on out there. I'm going to be fully supplied by you. Amen. Because I trust in you. That's how precious giving is. And so let's take a minute and pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that we can just pause and, and Lord, not only um, give to you like physically, Father, but to give to you in our heart, Lord God. For Lord, may our giving move our heart. You said that you love a cheerful giver. And so, Lord, we we tithe or we uh, sow seed or we we give offerings into this ministry because we believe that this ministry belongs to you. Every single pencil, every single paper, every single item in 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 these buildings, Lord, including the buildings themselves, no one man owns them, Lord. You own it all. It all belongs to you, Lord. And so, Father, we're thankful that we can participate in advancing your kingdom and glorifying your name here on this earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. We'll do um, a communion, which is a beautiful service uh, for me. Uh, I just love it when we all get together. Gives me an opportunity to just just, uh, be be a messenger here this morning. That's That's what I am. I'm a messenger. Amen. If you believe that who God calls, he equips, God said he'll give you pastors after his own heart. And so um, I'm just going to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me to tell you and lead you to Jesus. Just going to lead you to him and, and uh, he does the rest. You and him, right? You work it out as you uh, listen to the words that are here today. So let's pray over the word. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, Father, that this word will find a home in each and every heart. I thank you, Lord God, that what I see out there is people that are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I see them in Christ. I see them as wonderfully and fearfully made. I see them as people that you love dearly, Lord. And if they were the only one on this earth, you would still have come and died for them. And I thank you for that great love, Lord God, that you have shown to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you want to follow along, we're going to read in Matthew 11. And uh, we're going to uh, just read that whole chapter. I was going to parse it up a little bit here, but then I thought, you know what? Let's just read it. But if you're you're looking for some reading um, this week, you can read Matthew 10 and Matthew 11. And then you'll get even deeper revelation, deeper understanding uh, of what Jesus was trying to say and get get a greater blessing of it. And so, you know, it's okay when you read the Bible not to have to read uh, a certain amount of chapters a day. It takes all the fun out of it. It's okay, in other words, to read a chapter or two chapters and be a month in there. If you're reading it and you're still getting info, don't leave yet. Right? But when you, when you read, you know, go ahead and get a notebook. I know a lot of people um, write, write in the margins of their Bibles. You know, I have like 50 Bibles. I don't know. I might be exaggerating or it might be low. I don't know. I got a lot. But all my Bibles, they all got writing on the margins, right? And sometimes you just get too much info with the Lord showing you. You got to move on over to a, to a, a, a laptop or a a notebook. Is a notebook old school? I still like notebooks. Still write in them, right? <laughs> you got notebooks. I, I love to just physically write, but, but meditation brings revelation. Amen? And so what we do, we feed you the word, and, and we, 
we give you the truth. We lead you to Jesus, but you got to work out your own salvation. Amen. And, and I know one thing, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. And so the more you get in the word and the more you meditate on it and the more you speak it to yourself, the more faith will continue to develop in you. Amen. And not just not not an ordinary substance. This is a supernatural faith that you will move mountains with. And so let's look at Matthew 11, verse 1. And let me just say this in verse 10. He had just given them the assignment to um, go out and, and teach and preach in his name and, to, and to, to go out into this world. And then in verse 11, um, chapter 11, verse 1, he continues. When Jesus had finished giving these instructions to his 12 disciples, he went out to teach and preach in the towns throughout the region. John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? And Jesus told them, go back to John and tell him what you have heard and what you have seen. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. Verse 7, as John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began talking about him to the crowds. What kind of man did, did you go into the wilderness to see? Was he a weak reed swaying by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No, people with expensive clothes live in palaces. Were you looking for a prophet? Yes, and he is more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcibly advancing and violent people are attacking it. For before John came, all the prophets and the law of Moses looked forward to this present time. And if you are willing to accept what I say, that what I say, he is Elijah, the one, of the, the, one the prophets said would come, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. To what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We've played a wedding song and you didn't come and dance. We played a funeral song and you didn't mourn. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking and you say he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard, and a friend of the tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns where he had done so many of his miracles, because they had repented, because they had not repented of their sins and turned to God. What sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. I tell you, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on the judgment day than you. And you people of, of Capernaum, Will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. For if the miracles I did for you had been done in wicked Sodom, it, it would still be here today. I tell you, even Sodom will be better off on judgment day than you. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, Thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. 
My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And let me just stop there, and then I'm going to get into this last part. And so Jesus is saying, you know, these, this generation of, of his time on earth, they were never satisfied. They were always complaining. They were always looking for something else. They were trying to find it in religion. They were trying to find it in, in criticism. Uh, he said, you know, we, we, you, play the, you play the wedding songs and no one dances. You play the funeral song and no one mourns. It, it, it's just, it's just uh, a nothingness, or a better word would be an emptiness. There's nothing there. But then Jesus said, Father, I, I thank you that you have chosen to reveal me to those who are not arrogant. That's what he's saying. Those who are not prideful. If you're arrogant and prideful and you feel you don't need Jesus in this world, he'll, he won't be, you'll never see him. Amen? Jesus has come to the weak, the lowly, those who have said, you know what? I choose to believe in you, Jesus. I may not be much. I got a lot going on, but I choose to come to you as I am. Then he has opened up to you like you never could believe. One thing about God and one thing about the Lord, the more you get to know him, he gets better and better and better and sweeter and sweeter. Amen. He just melts your heart. Did you ever meet somebody in the beginning and uh, you thought, well, they're, they're a pretty good person and, and I think they're okay. I might get to know them better. But then the more you get to know them, you're like, okay, maybe not, <laughs> you know? Well, that's not God. That's not God. Have you ever heard anyone say, boy, my life was going great until I got saved? Until I met God? No, you hear it the other way around, right? And so Jesus is saying that generation, they're, they're, they're thoughtless, they're careless. In other parts of the scriptures, he says they're like a, a well-manicured graveyard. Looks great on the outside, but, on, but beneath, it's, it's full of dead men's bones. Nothing, no substance there, amen? Think about what Jesus did for each and every one of you. He fought for you. He fought for you. He came and he died and he suffered for you. Just so you would have a right to sit here today. Just so he could anoint a pastor man and anoint a church to tell you the good news. Just so you could know that when you come to God, you'll be accepted and never, never, uh, thrown away. That's what Jesus did for us. Amen? And so he's like, I'm thankful that you revealed it to those people, to the childlike. Amen? To those people that say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be one of these people that say that, that, that I, I got everything figured out and that I, I'm, I'm, that's a high deception there. Do you know there are some people they don't, they, they, they've heard of Jesus, they know about Jesus, they, they've had some degree or another, and they walk away from him. I saw a video where they asked these people in the street, would you rather have a billion dollars or eternity with Jesus? And most of them said a billion dollars. Sad, isn't it? It's sad. All those things of the world are going to be burn up in the end. Amen? And Jesus said, if you try to live a life like that to save your own carnal life, you're going to lose it anyway, in the end. But if you lose your life for his sake and you trust him and you come to him with, with the humility in your heart, he'll give you a brand new life. God doesn't mind us having things. He just doesn't want things to have us. Now, we're a word of faith church. We believe in the scriptures. We believe it's God's will to heal. Are you with me? We believe in the rhema word, the spoken words. You can move mountains with the words that you say, but all that stuff don't matter if your heart ain't right. If you're believing God for a Cadillac every day, nothing wrong with Cadillacs. I like Cadillacs. Not a pink Cadillac. I don't know that song. But, <laughs> but if you're believing God for the uh, Maserati, I don't know. What kind of car do you like? But every day, oh, I'm going to get me that car. I'm believing I'm believing. You ain't ever getting a car by God's hands. Amen? Because what about the lost? What about your hurting neighbor? 
Amen. What about your pastor? What about your church? What about the people in your church? What about your concern and, and your desire to see them do well? Amen. God does bless people, but you got to have a right heart. When I was at Ramah, uh, <laughs> there was this guy, a student. He, he gave away a car to, an, to another student, and uh, God told him to do it. And you know what? God got him a better car. Supernaturally got him a better car. That seed time on harvest does work. But then there was another student, and he heard about that. So I'm going to try that too. And so he gave his car away. Last I heard, he's still walking. <laughs> he didn't have the right motive, right? I mean, he thought this word of God was so that he could get better cars. Amen? God loves us to have things, but when things have you, it bumps him down from number one to whatever number you want to put him in your life, and he can't work that way. If you want the full effect of an almighty God that changes lives and causes the rose to grow in the desert and makes a way where there seems to be no way, you got to say, God, I am all yours. I trust you. I believe in you. I honor you. And I'm going to believe that your way is better than any man's way. I mean, how long are you going to get, be fooled by the world thinking that the world has something to offer you? Does the world look happy to you? If we do this Christian life right, everybody should see the joy on our face. Amen? They should see the peace in our heart. They should see the courage in our life because those things come from God, not the world. And I'm not saying when you serve God, you'll never have a problem. I got tons of things going around all the time. But those problems don't bring me down. Amen? I was telling Sister Denise the other day, like, uh, we had a uh, problem with the, with the uh, um, soundboard over in the, in the, for the school. And uh, um, I said, well, just go look at it and see what you can do. Now, Sister Denise, when she took that job, she, we know she's not like an uh, uh, electronics expert, right? <laughs> right? But she's good with people, and she's smart, and she can figure stuff out. <laughs> but I said, just look at it. And, and, and see what you could do. But I said this, that there's no hurry. I mean, there's no, we're not going to panic here. The school isn't going to fall apart because we don't have a soundboard. Now, if you tell me the Holy Spirit's broken, now we've got another problem. <laughs> you know, we can have church without any kind of assistance in those ways. We can have church just, just the old-fashioned way. As long as we've got the Holy Spirit, we're good to go. Right? And so, but by the way, she did fix it too. <laughs> so praise God for that. But, but we can't get so reliant on things of the world. I'm putting my faith in this. I'm putting this trust in this. Now we all have, uh, you know, we believe, we have strong opinions about the, the president who we feel should be president. And we're believing for the one that has the godly platform. But, but whoever's president isn't the savior of the world. Right. Amen? Amen. And we pray that the right godly people get in there. But even when they get in there, we're still a hurting, lost country that needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I believe every believer should vote because your vote is your seed. You were given that right by God and by living in this country to vote. Amen. And sometimes people think, well, I'm only one person. What does it matter? You are one of millions that God speaks to the heart and gets the right candidates in there because they say if all the Christians would vote there wouldn't be no issue amen, amen. amen. and so God's bigger than all of us now I'm not going to ask you if you voted I'm not going to get on your nerves I'm just saying I just threw that out there right and so I'm not even getting political I don't get political anyway right I'll just tell you what the Holy Spirit puts in my heart. <laughs> but this world needs Jesus. And then, you know, some, we say sometimes, I believe a revival is coming. I believe a revival is coming. Yeah, it's coming. But it's not coming when you're, if you're not yielding yourself to the Lord. In other words, revival starts in you. Amen. Revival starts in you, and you come to church already on fire. You come to church burning with love, 
burning with compassion, burning with the willingness to praise and worship God, because when you praise and worship God, it helps other people get there too. Amen? And in that energy and in that excitement of bringing people into the kingdom of God that have never been saved before, people that come back to God, that thrills me. That gives me more energy than anything else to see somebody turn their life around, to see somebody going one way and all of a sudden say, you know what? I got God in my heart, and I'm going to tell people about Jesus. That is my spiritual food. Amen? And you get enough of those people in here, and you get enough of people that just says, you know what, God, I'm going to turn my, change my direction and focus on you 100%. You're going to see all the things that you want to see. That's what they had in the book of Acts, was it not? What did they have in the book of Acts? Revival. That was the former reign of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Well, the Bible promises a latter rain. There's a rain that comes in the beginning of the harvest to get the, for the beginning of the harvest, and then there's a latter day rain that helps you bring in the harvest. We're in the latter day territory. But those people of Acts, did they have miracle signs and wonders? What, 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 what did they have in common? They loved each other. They were thankful grateful people they weren't worried about who had more donkeys than the other one i was going to say a car but they didn't have cars who had a better car they weren't worried about who had a bigger house they weren't worried about anything but but i am so thankful i have jesus and he is burning in my heart and the power of god fell on them they didn't even have ken copeland back then he wasn't even around. They didn't have Creflo Dollar. They didn't have Joyce Myers. They're great people, and we're thankful for that. They had none of that. They had the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And they had something great, a love for one another. And you know what they had? A desire to get out there and tell someone about Jesus. Amen? That's what's going to bring the fire. It's going to bring the rain. But it comes at a, a commitment. Jesus said, I, I pray for those if they would be offended because of me. There are people that get offended because of Jesus. Because you know what? A lot of the world don't like Jesus. Amen? Misery loves company and that's not their company. And so you might take the blunt of it because you follow Jesus. If you follow the ways of the Lord. Today's with the, with the, with the internet. There's a lot of cyber bullies out there. I'll never forget one day, uh, this, this uh, young lady, she, she just was a good Christian woman. I don't think she understood really what was going on. This is like 10 years ago, right when the cyber bullying was just amping up. I never cared about no bullies. I'm just saying, but anyway. And so she puts on there about abortion. And, and, and it's just that we want the babies to live, Right. We, we want the babies to live because every baby was formed in the womb by God. All life comes from God. She wasn't trying to make a political statement. She was just making a statement. And oh my goodness, the comments she got, you would have thought she said, kill all babies. No, that's what they were saying. Basically, right? And she got blasted. And, and it's happened to me before. Well, you know what? Jesus said if they, if they treat you that way, know that they treated him first. That way first, right? But you have to understand that those people are lost. You're not. Those people are hurting. You're, you're not hurting that way. They're blind. Amazing grace. I was blind, but now I see. Right? You're celebrating, you were blind, spiritually blind to all these things, but now you see. Well, guess what? There's a whole world of blind people out there. And you know what? The blind's leading the blind, and they're all falling into the ditch. And so where is the people of light? Where is the people of salt? Where is the people of passion? Where are the people that says, Jesus fought for me, so I'm going to fight for him. I'm going to fight for those souls. I'm going to do what he called me to do. He's looking for that army right now. He is calling the army now. You can take that as just a man saying something in a sermon, or you can take that from the Spirit of the Lord, but I'm telling you, he's calling the army now. 
He's saying, who is with me? Who's going to get off the couch? Who's going to get out of their own head? Who's going to stop comparing themselves to someone else and just go out there and be the them that I created them to be and tell somebody about Jesus? Amen. That book of Acts, read the book of Acts. That'll put a fire in you. Amen? If it doesn't, your wood's wet and you just got to work at it. Right? I mean to tell you, Christians have, have missed the mark. You know, there's a difference between standing your ground. You say, well, I know what I believe and we're okay. You're standing your ground. But you know what's better than standing your ground? Gaining ground. Somebody went after me. Well, actually, it's my parents' ministry, but somebody went after them, right? Somebody ministered to them. And then they ministered to me, and now I'm ministering to you. See, God's got it all figured out. You don't know how far the reaches will go if you just put the seed in people and tell people the truth in love. It's literally like a, it might be a bad comparison, but it might be like Amway. Anybody remember Amway? If, if you don't, you can Google it, but you don't have to. It's just like a pyramid thing. We sell stuff, right? And, and, and you sell to this person, and then they sell, and then they sell, and you still get a piece of the pie because you sold way back then. God's Amway system is way better. I don't even want to call it an Amway system. He never forgets the whole chain of events. That's what we're here for. Anybody think God forgets anything? Well, one thing. Your sins. That's good. Whew. And I say, whew, because I'm glad I got that out there, because somebody reminded me afterwards. Like, You're right, you got me. <laughs> you got me. No, I got myself that time. He does, he does choose to remember your sin no more. You know why? Because if you were a believer, he looks at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees you through the blood. He doesn't see you out of Christ. He sees you in Christ. Man, that's... That's precious right there. Amen. But look what Jesus said here in verse 28. <clears throat> and Jesus said, <clears throat> come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> so is there anybody in here weary, um, carrying heavy burdens, and need some rest? Is there anybody? You don't have to raise your hand, but is there anybody? Anybody at all? Come to Jesus. Did he say, go to Bible school first? Get yourself cleaned up? <clears throat> go get yourself some better clothes? <clears throat> no. Come to me. And that reminds me, you know, a lot of people, yeah, I get this more than, than what most people think. They, they want to come to church, sweet people. You know, and, and, and uh, but they all say, What's the dress code like? I said, we ain't got no dress code. <laughs> Come in your comfortable clothes. The only reason I'm wearing this jacket because I'm standing up here, but I guarantee you five minutes from being home, I'm in some kind of sweatpants or sweatshirt or something. <laughs> right? You come as you are. Who cares about what you wear? Amen? I don't care. Do, you, do anybody care? I don't care about that stuff. I care about your heart. I care about your soul. I care about getting you some help. I'm a messenger. I'm telling you about Jesus. I'm leading you to him. Amen? That's why you, gotta, you do have to be careful of the big um, TV ministers. I'm not talking about Ken Copeland and things like that because they're solid. But some TV ministers, they, they make them out to be gods. They're not God. And they keep putting this stuff in their head. And then they, they fall. They fall. Amen? Why, and then why, why would a, a TV minister have any more input and more say in your life than your, than your, your local pastor? Amen? When I was at Ramah, I was watching, a, a, there's a lot of big churches out at Ramah. And there was this one guy. I don't want to mention names or anything, but he was like really dynamic and had a really great church going. 
And I seen another minister come into his church. He was a guest minister. Both of them now just uh, not serving God right. I'm not judging them, but I'm looking at the fruit. And the, the guest minister said to the pastor that was there, he said, there's only a person who comes along like you once in a lifetime. And there's no one else like you. I'm thinking, is he talking about Jesus or who? Who's he talking about? He's talking about that pastor. And I thought, oh, man, that sounds like trouble here. Amen. Did we just read that Jesus said, I'm thankful that, that, that you revealed me to the lowly and to the meek and to the people that don't got a lot of stuff going on in their own talents. I'm thankful that you put me in the hearts of the common people because they won't steal my glory. Amen. But he said, come to him. And that's what we're going to do today. That's what communion's all about, is it not? And so if you're in here today and you are still struggling with things in your past or things that are currently going on in your life, Please stop, because it's bringing you down, and it's hurting your heart, and it's hurting your relationships. You can't go for any forward because, we're not, I'm not saying disrespectfully, but you're like a stick in the mud. You gotta get out of the mud and say, God, I believe in new beginnings. I believe that you can heal my heart, heal my soul, heal, just cleanse me of all the past. And let me go help some poor soul. Amen? Jesus said it's not what goes into the person that defiles the man. But it's what comes out. It's what's in your heart. What you allow in your heart. Sometimes people, they struggle with certain um, uh, self-medicating things over the years. They're just dependent on, on alcohol or drugs or things like that. I, I want to tell you... If you're in that boat, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to quit? Did he say, come to me, but quit first? Did he say that? You're supposed to come to Jesus and just learn about him. Let him become a part of who you are. Just spend time in his presence. And then the power and the spirit of God and the passion of God and the courage of God will come up. And anything that's in your life is holding you down. You'll break those chains in Jesus name. Amen. You won't need to self medicate. You got the healer himself. And he'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free from that bondage. Religious people like to say, oh, no, don't tell anybody that stuff. I remember back in the day, I, I just quit all that stuff. Cold turkey. Well, good for you. Now we've got to do something about your critical heart. Because something happened along the way. But you don't care about people any more than that to compare them to what you did. How about we just do what Jesus said? And he said, Come. Open your heart and come to me. He's saying, give me a chance. Give me a chance. And let me show you what I'll do. I'll heal your marriage. I'll heal your finances. I'll heal your depression. Even though it's not yours, but you know what I mean. The depression is bonded. I want to make sure I clarify that. It's not, you don't want it, right? I'll heal your body. I'll show you things so powerful and so meaningful just between me and you in our prayer time that it, you'll rise up and, and you'll just have to tell somebody what I told you. Things about the addictions of the world, you don't, they don't you just want to do yourself. Just, just be with yourself. Amen. There's not a lot, a lot of good, sometimes, the, I don't know. Well, I do know. Come to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Look at this. Come unto me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you what? Rest. What kind of rest? Rest for your soul, your weary soul. He's not saying I'll take you back into the back bedroom and put you to bed and give you a little comforter. You know what it means to be at rest? All is well with my soul. 
I'm starting a brand new day this morning, and I'm under the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and, and, and no weapon formed against me will prosper, prosper. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will stand in, 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 the, in the glory of my God. Amen. That's rest. I remember when uh, the kids, they were uh, little, they, they all went to um, Magic Ears. Anybody, is Magic Ears still there? Right off of Stanley Avenue. I have four little ones in there. Now, that was expensive. But there was a program that helped me, so I'm glad. But Magic Ears ha had a rule that you had to be on time, and every five minutes or something, they, they would charge you some kind of crazy amount of money. So that put pressure on me to get back to get, get back on time. But one day I was at work, and I got a phone call that my youngest son, Cole, had a seizure. And, and he had never had anything like that. And you know what? I just said a prayer. Your first words in times of trouble are important. You say, you didn't have no fear? Yeah, it came at me like a banshee. It came at me hard. It wanted to, but I'm like, no. I haven't been given a spirit of fear. God will always send the word in the time of the storm. I've not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Nothing's going to touch my family or my children. And when I walked in there, in there to Magic Gears to, to check on Cole, he had already been moved to the hospital. And so I'm just, I'm talking to the, the director in there, and she said, how are you so calm? How are you not phased by it? You know what I told her? I got trust in God. Amen? So you don't ever really know what's in you. I mean, you know by faith, but man, when you're put through the fire and, and that stuff comes out of you, the devil done messed up. Because when he tries to put that stuff on you and you beat him down with the word and you beat him down with the spirit and you don't take his fear and you rise above it in faith, you, you totally have grown to a stronger state. Amen. David defeated the lion. He defeated the bear. And then when the money was on the line, he slew Goliath. This is the lifestyle I'm talking about. Not a quick, get, get fixed quick scheme, right? Sometimes people say, well, I tried that Bible stuff, but it don't work. No. It tried you and you failed it. Remember one time a guy, we, Leslie and I were working with a guy, he, he just, he had a lot of problems and bad substance problems, but, but his wife was really a good Christian woman and, and she just wanted it to work. And we, so we had a whole plan, all scriptural. We're not worldly counselors here. I didn't go to Harvard, but I do have the Holy Spirit. I do have the wisdom of the word of God. Amen. And besides, I got a wife, she knows it too. And there's a lot of times when I'm thinking about saying something, I'm not sure if I should or not. She says it, so I say, okay, you got my back, God. I was supposed to say it. But we're just trying to put it together. All she wanted was for her husband to come to church and, and, and have Bible time with the family and start doing the, take up the spiritual headship of that home. And we met him two weeks later, and he said, I, try, I, I tried it, and it didn't work. Well, this was some time later, one, two weeks later, because I'm going to use a two-week thing. It was some time later. They came back. They wanted to talk again. And I said, really? Well, how long did you try? Because it worked for me. I don't think I'm anybody special. He said, oh, about two weeks. I'm like, two weeks? You didn't even get out of the boat. You, you, didn't, even, you didn't even start. Two weeks? Now, when we were talking to you, I meant lay it all down and say, I'm never, ever going back there. I believe that God's life for me is better than anything back there. I'm going to love my wife. I'm going to love my children. I'm going to be a man of God like, like he called me to be. I'm not going to be bound to anything. Because that's what the devil tries to do, bind you. Amen? Amen. Look what he says in verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. How many of you have found Jesus to be humble and gentle at heart? You can raise your hand. You think he died for you to, to 
be harsh with you? He's humble. This is God. Amen? This is the name above all names. This is Jesus. Yeah, I know the first time he came as a lamb, as a spotless lamb and a baby in a manger, but when he comes back the second time, he's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? And he's going to defeat the, the Antichrist and all the armies of Satan with the words of his mouth. And that same majestic God says, I'm humble and I'm gentle with you. Man, that makes me happy. Amen? It says, take my yoke upon you. Let me, let me teach you. So you have to learn about the Lord. You have to learn. I don't want you to learn about religion. I want you to learn about Jesus. Amen? You don't, there's a lot to learn. But if you can get tucked away in his presence in the rest while you're learning, you're going to learn the right way. He says, I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden I give you is light. Mm. All is well with my soul. Amen. We'll get ready to show this video, and we're going to worship the Lord, and we're going to have communion. The video is only like six minutes long, so I want you just to hang with me here. How many know sometimes we live in a natural world, right? Not, that's not sometimes, all the time we live in a natural world. <laughs> we live in a natural world. We, we're a spiritual body. We're born again. But, you, but in order to get into the spiritual things, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes a desire to just, just say, you know what, God? I've given you this hour and a half. I've given you this two hours. I've given it all to you because I need you. It takes a, a clearing the schedule. I always say don't put a pot roast in before you come because it might burn. <laughs> Nobody put a pot roast in, did you? Now, I understand sometimes people have to leave because they, they it's, all, it's not even 1130 yet, but sometimes people have to leave because they got things they have to do. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you that can stay. Amen? Because what the mind does, the mind starts to get a little squirrely. No, nope. better put that squirrel in a trap and let it go in the woods somewhere. Relax in the presence of God because he's trying to minister to you. Amen? And as he ministers to you, you'll never be the same. And so what I'd like to do is, is we can get the, the song ready. We can go ahead and dim the lights. Would you rise, please? I'd like to sing this song together. And it's about believing in Jesus. Amen. In fact, what I'd like to do, I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm just going to come up here. I'm just going to be up, stay up here and worship the Lord. If any of you would like to come up and worship with, with us, it's about front too, you can. But what, but what this is here. I want you to connect. We're making an introduction. That's what the Holy Spirit does, right? I want you to open your heart. I got the lights down. Nobody's looking at you, right? It don't matter if you can't sing a tune. I can't either. But I bet it sounds good to God. Amen? Some of, some of you have never, ever done this. I know it because the Holy Spirit told me. You have never, ever just let yourself worship God. You never let yourself just open your heart up and say, you know what, I'm coming as I am because the word says to, and I know you love me unconditionally, and I'm just going to take that yoke off of me now. Because the, when Jesus says that they're yoked with the world, the, the yoke, take that yoke of bondage, in biblical times, in some cultures today, they would yoke two oxen together. With the wooden bar, that was the yoke of oxen. And the, those oxen would be used to plow together for more plowing plow. And so what he's saying is, you're yoked up with all the, the junk of the world. In your mind and in, in your, you're just your total being, you're yoked up. He says, take my yoke, for I'm easy, I'm light, I'm kind, I'm compassionate. Learn about me, open up to me, I'll give you rest. That's the most beautiful thing, isn't it? Jesus said in Romans 12, too, he says, do not be conformed to the world, 
but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I asked you this, and then we're going to sing. Why would you want to be conformed to a world that's passing away? I don't. Amen? And so let, we can sing and worship this song. If you'd like to come up in here, you can sing too. Let's just worship this song and open our hearts to the Lord. Then we'll have communion. Amen. We believe. We believe. You know, as we were singing that song, the Lord put this in my heart. Uh, as you spend time in prayer, as, if, as you open your heart, trust me, God knows when hearts are opening up to him. Because the Bible says the spirit of the Lord goes to and fro throughout the earth looking for hearts that are loyal and calling out. So he'll be right there. But as you spend time in, in prayer and in, in, in the word and just worshiping him, he's going to start to show you doors. And he's going to open those doors for you to walk through. And you're going to say, well, Lord, I would never walk through that door on my own. And the Lord's going to say to you, you're not alone anymore. Amen. I'm with you. And I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Do you trust me? Do you believe in me? Do you believe in the one who died for you? Do you believe that I'm living for you right now? And you're going to walk through those doors. And what you're going to see, what you're going to experience, honestly, it, it's beyond what you can comprehend now. Because a lot of you, some of you, all you've known is hurt and pain. And, 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 and a lot of things that have just, just boggled your mind. There's some people you don't even know what it sounds like to laugh because you haven't heard yourself laugh in a long time. And when you laugh again, you're going to startle yourself and say, where'd that come from? That came from you. That came from God in you. But you have to take the necessary steps. You just have to believe. In the Bible, it talks about a man by the name of Naaman in the Old Testament. He got leprosy. He was from, he was from the Syrian um, government, and he was a mighty, mighty war hero. But one thing was wrong. He had leprosy, and leprosy kills. Leprosy eats the skin right off of you. And he had a, a little maid in his house that was from the land of Israel. She said, there's a prophet in Israel. He can heal you. And so he sends a letter to, to, to the king of Syria, because the king of Syria loved this man, because he's the war general that won all these battles. And the king of, of Syria sends a letter to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel reads this letter and it says, I'm sending to you my main man, Naaman. Heal him of leprosy. And the king of Israel, he bugged out, for lack of a better word. He tore his clothes. He's like, what's he trying to do? Start a, start a war? He's, he's like, who do you think I am? God? But Elisha heard about it. Not Elijah. Elisha heard about it. And he said, send him here. That all the world may know that there's a God in Israel. And so Naaman comes up to where Elisha is. I'm sure it's just a tent city out in the desert somewhere. And he rolls up in his whole entourage. It must have been a beautiful sight because he was a big wig. You know, today it would be all these black limos. Back then it probably all these fine horses and everything coming up. And, and he steps out and, and, and Elisha doesn't even go out to talk to him, but he sends the, the, his servant out with the word of the Lord. And he says, you go dip yourself seven times in that Jordan River, and you'll be healed. And Naaman got offended. He's like, well, he could at least come out and talk to me. Don't you know who I am? He could have come out and waved his hand over, made this big to-do. And, and he left. He was going back to his homeland offended. But he had a servant who cared about him, a servant who loved him. And he said, he said now, sir... If he'd have asked you to do something real noble or valiant, you would have done it. Shouldn't you just do this humble thing that he asked you to do? Because Naaman's like, man, the rivers in my homeland are crystal clear. They're beautiful rivers. That Jordan River is a muddy mess. But the problem is God didn't say go to those rivers. He didn't say go to your own crystal clear rivers because the crystal clear rivers of the world, they look crystal clear, but they're full of death. And a lot of times the things that God wants you to do, it's, it's not a very appealing to the flesh, but it leads to life. It leads to happiness. It leads to everything you're looking for in the other rivers. And so he says, fine, I'll do it. And he goes down to the Jordan River, dips himself seven times, comes back up, completely healed. Skin of a baby. And he went back to Elisha. He's like, you're God. 
He's my God. And so sometimes our own mind, our own experiences, and by what the way of the world is, we look at the things of God. Coming to church, reading my Bible, spending time in prayer, praising God. The flesh sometimes, like, man, that's a muddy, that's a muddy river. I better rather be out eating Cheetos or whatever. No, that is the crystal clear waters of the Spirit. Those rivers brought me out of the land of, of nothingness to be able to stand in the presence of God and speak to you. The rivers of God brought me farther than I thought I could ever go. Amen? And so that's all available for all of us. You may be seated, then we'll have communion, then we'll let you out of here. Okay, so remember that. You're going to be seeing doors open up. You know what my door was when the Lord won? The one that he told me eventually? He said, I want you to go to Rama Bible Training Center. I'm like, say what? But you know what? It's the best move I ever made in my life. Next to Mary and my wife, of course. <laughs> Honestly, that was a door I'd never walk through, ever. Just talking in front of people. Man, who are you trying to kid? I was the non-talker when I was alone. I was the quiet one when I was alone. But I wasn't alone anymore. I had a vibrant God in me saying, come on, do this, and I'll be with you every step of the way. I can't wait to see the doors he has for you. Amen. So you, do you have the wafer of bread? This wafer of bread represents the body of Jesus. Now remember now, what did Jesus say when he, when he took communion with the disciples? Do it in remembrance of, of me. Why would he want you to do it in remembrance of him? Only one reason. It's not, it's not rocket science. He don't want you to forget about him. He don't want you to forget what he did. What did he do? Died on that cross, battered and bruised, so that you could be healed, you could be delivered, and you could be set free. So you can break and eat. Now we'll get the grape juice. <clears throat> Communion is a powerful moment. If you're doing it with your heart, which I know you are. Paul was talking to the church of Corinth and he said, look, some of you are sick, some of you are dying, some of you are this or that because you're taking communion in, in an unworthy manner. Did anybody ever read that verse? Well, bad teaching has meant, has twisted that around to, make, to say like, if you're not doing good in your life and you got stuff going on, don't you dare take communion. Man, that's the total opposite of what I just told you for like an hour. That's like the total opposite. That don't make any sense. What he's saying is, if you recognize and you believe in the power of the body and honor the body of Christ and the body of the fellow believers, there's tremendous power to set you free. Amen? To heal your body, to heal your mind, to, to, to just deliver you in any way that you need delivered. No wonder Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. Amen? And so we could take the grape juice drink okay would you bow your heads I want to pray for you and father I thank you for these precious souls that are here Lord I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to um, minister to their heart Lord I, pr I pray it this way Lord that they that they continue to allow you access into their life and into their heart, Lord. Father, I pray that, that um, there be no weapon formed against them will prosper. Lord, I thank you for healing their bodies, for we believe that by the stripes on Jesus' back, we are healed. We thank you for healing them, spirit, soul, and body, Lord God, the, healing their minds, Lord. Father, you said the chastisement of our peace was upon you on the cross, Lord. 
And I really believe, Lord, that when he put that crown of thorns on the head of Jesus, it was, it was the price paid for a peace of mind and mental well-being, Lord God. So, Father, I thank you for that, Lord. No depression, no anxiety, only the, the, the Spirit of God opening doors and taking them places. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Would you rise, and I'm, and I'm going to ask Brother Lowell to come up and close in prayer. And thank you for being here today. And um, come on up here, brother. And so tonight.